Welcome back to the channel guys, it's me Gretel and today I'm going to get a little bit of flack for this or maybe a lot of flack for this but we are going to talk about the seven, the top seven shows that I hated the most and I know it's going to be a little bit on the nose for some and for others it's going to be like what the f but these shows were horrible, I hated them so much and we're going to go through them so just buckle up grab your snack grab your favorite drink we're, we're going to start talking okay we're going to start talking right now my number seven the number seven spot is going to be as told by ginger and i know a lot of people are going to be like You guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, this show was so cringe. Not because the people were cringe, but the situations were so cringe. I internalized all that. I really didn't understand Ginger's relationship with Courtney. I didn't understand her best friend. I forgot what her name was, but like she was a bully. So like if your friend is a bully, then you're a bully. So then I guess you guys are not friends. What I'm trying to say is that this show was just too much for me. I mean, let's just roll a clip. What the hell? This is a kid show? Like, me, a five-year-old, seven-year-old, six-year-old, whatever, watching this? I just watched someone get traumatized. And not every episode is like that, but like, hot damn, like, this is something for Teen Nick. I think that that show was just a little bit too much for a kid show. I internalized all that. Number six, bruh, The Wild Thornberries. I hated this show i love the show for nigel the mom i thought the not the mom was really nice sister was a little bit annoying but you know i understood her most of all as a kid you want to watch a show where you want to feel like you're part of the show you know like you can talk to animals like maybe i can talk to animals like you know something like that but that show in particular if you were in those situations it was just anxiety mania like it was just just watch this clip Hey, Gretel editing here. Uh, so the audio was really bad, so I'm just going to describe what's happening here. Essentially, uh, this elephant just dies at the end of the episode. It's pretty heartbreaking because she uh, remembered um, Eliza's father because Eliza's father saved her once in her childhood. And now here's Eliza. You know what I mean? So uh, pretty heartbreaking for, for me to watch even now. Um, but that's what happened. It was just not a show for me. Like, I just did not like how much became so real. It was like, it was like I was watching a documentary while watching the news, while also trying to be a kid at the same time, while also trying to find enjoyment in something like this. I didn't mind it when a show like That's So Raven, you know, would do something like this, where like it would bring like a real world thing or Fresh Prince of Bel Air. With The Wild Thornberries, I feel like they really missed the mark. I don't know, man. It was just not for me. I, I just don't think it was for all kids. You know, I wouldn't want to watch a show again if like one episode does that hey arnold did it well because hey arnold kind of left everything kind of like open but these topics i feel didn't work so well in the wall of thornberry the next one this is not gonna be a surprise i don't think many people like the show uh the replacements so the replacement was just a show on disney channel so these kids filled out an ad from a magazine and then they sent it in and now they're able to replace people which is a weird concept it just had a problem with keeping the storyline interesting i couldn't fall in love with the characters the characters were just very i want to call them like one dimensional and you know they, they really never learned their lessons like at the end of every episode they just kind of like regret it or they, they or they see that they were better off you know just keeping the things how they were and appreciating that the, the things that they had but then they came back to the same thing the next episode and I really didn't fall in love with the characters. I feel like the characters were just obnoxious. Yeah, I mean, even the side characters, I really didn't like the side characters. The mom, the dad, I, I didn't find them. I didn't find anything about them that I wanted to keep on watching. Now the show, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I am definitely gonna get flagged for this one. One was wicked aggressive and a psychopath. The other one was wicked dumb and I kind of low key, low key, low key. I feel really bad for him because it's like, I couldn't see him becoming one of my friends. Like actually none of them. So. One that was wicked dumb and then one that was wicked anxious. I didn't see none of them becoming my friends. Plank was the only one that was actually pretty good. Plank would have been my friend. But that's 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 the thing about the show. Like I get that the show is supposed to be like a show based on wild cards. Like what happens when you put a psychopath or like an aggressive person next to a dumb person next to like a really anxious person? Like how does that work out? You know, 
and I, I really felt bad for the anxious guy. And by the way, all of them are Eds. So I I couldn't tell you which one was Ed, Ed with double D, and then Eddie with a Y at the end. But for the anxious kid, I was just like, I always thought to myself, like, why doesn't he just stop hanging out with them? Like, if they cause him so much stress, why doesn't he just, like, I, that's the thing with me. I internalize my shows. Like, I gotta watch a good show because I'm gonna internalize that. And I wish, I wish I loved it because everyone loved it and it was just a dumb show. But, I mean, Spongebob is a dumb show and it's still, it is still so much better than Ed, Ed and Eddie. It's so much better. Spongebob is so much better than Ed, Ed and Eddie because although they're both dumb shows, the characters in Spongebob are lovable. But the characters in Ed, Ed and Eddie are just annoying. There's Kevin. Kevin is a bully. There's these girls that always try to like kiss and attack these boys. I don't want to see that. The next two shows are El Tigre, uh, The Adventures of Manuel Rivera, and also The Exes. Now, I'm, I'm presenting them both together because they both got one season and they were both horrible shows. I could have just said show number one, The Who, and the other one, The What. El Tigre, it was about this kid basically that... I keep on saying that basically, but I'm not even getting to the point. El Tigre was about a kid that had superpowers and was deciding whether or not to become a villain or to become a superhero. Very great. I, I love that, but the show was too goofy for its own good. I mean, at least for me, that's how I saw it as a kid. I was just like, this is like for kids, kids. Like, this is not for me. The first thing about The Excess, which really turned me off, was just the graphics. Uh, well, first of all, the storyline. The storyline was just this family of superheroes. whoop de doo Also, the graphics, I didn't like it. The There was this one villain that looked really scary. I'm not going to put it on the screen because... I'm not. If I was in that boardroom, I would have told him, hey, this is not this is not gonna work out. You guys, I spent my whole childhood in front of a TV. Like, I know about these shows. These shows are not good. And then the one that takes the number one spot, this is such a horrible show. I don't know who made it. I'm just gonna show one picture and that's it, okay? That's it. I hated this show. The show was horrible and it was Courage the Cowardly Dog. Yo, this show, I don't even know where to begin. I try to get clips for this show. But there were just two, I know, no, 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 no. I remember one time when I snapped. I was like, mommy, why did you put that on TV? And she's like, oh, I thought you liked the show. And I was like, mommy, no, no, I don't like this show. Like, this show is scary. Like, look at this. Look at this, mommy. She was just, like, so surprised. Like, oh, so you don't watch every show that's on TV. You know, like, because I spent my whole childhood, you know, watching TV. Chris the Carly Dog. It was just too scary, I feel like, for kids. I despised the show so much. It was so scary. These drawings, these concepts, these things that were happening were, like, borderline satanic. I do not. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 no. No. And like I said, I, like, when I was a kid, I used to imagine that I was part of shows and, like, imagine being part of that show. Okay, we're gonna move to something a little bit lighter in this section. Uh, we're gonna move on to the honorable mentions. If the Barbarian was about kingdom and the parents, the king and queen, just leave out. They just go away to, like, some foreign land. And in the meantime, the kids have to stay and take care of the kingdom. And we have Dave the Barbarian, who is a coward. We've, basically, we've got a, a whole bunch of these characters. And, you know, I feel like the characters were really, really well written. I feel like maybe if the show, instead of it being, like, a problem per episode, if maybe it was, like, at the end of the season, they were going to reach something. I forget what that's called. Maybe if the show had a reason to go on, like, he finally becomes the king, or the kingdom finally fights off the neighboring kingdom or something like that i feel like the show would have been so much better but because it didn't have like an overarching drive or, or issue and then there was there was nothing there, there was nothing to be had with that show because i saw the potential as a kid like i was like this would be a lot better but like nothing was going on with it now we got brandy and mr whiskers my final honorable mention brandy and mr whiskers was a great show i mean these pets this dog brandy and mr whiskers a rabbit they both end up falling out of an airplane into a jungle and they are just basically stranded there and then they make friends i feel like the show was not stable because the characters were really really far apart like mr whiskers was wicked goofy and then brandy was snobby and like serious and i feel like it wouldn't have worked out either they both have to kind of be serious and like carry out an overarching you know plot line to get out of the jungle or brandy had to be a lot more silly 
they basically have like a really really nice duo kind of like spongebob and patrick you know what i mean like i feel like the show had potential but the characters did not mesh well especially in the situation that they were in where they were stuck and they couldn't i just i don't know and i know that they had different characters coming in but it just wasn't cutting it i felt like it was a just a throwaway show like it had potential in the beginning but it was just thrown away and there was not much that you can really do with that show with the way that the characters were written Anyways, you guys, please tell me, comment down below, where did I go wrong? Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video, you guys, but just let me know down below before you leave. What is your top seven most hated shows or most hated cartoon shows down in the comments? Let me know your honorable mentions, the ones that almost made the cut. Like, subscribe, give me some love. I really do appreciate it, honestly. And I will see you guys next time.